Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Step into your divine authority and reign with power. In Manifesting Kingdom Authority, Apostle Joshua Selman reveals how to unlock your spiritual dominion. Discover the keys to harnessing God's authority through scripture and revelation. Learn how to stand strong and unyielding in the face of adversity. Embrace your role as a kingdom ambassador and transform your world, empowering you to manifest the authority of God's kingdom. It just happened like that without power. It took power for Jesus to lift Hades back to the earth, power from the earth to the throne. Elevation is a product of power. There are many people in ministry who do not understand the dynamics of power. There are many people in business who do not understand the dynamics of power. There are many leaders who do not understand power because we have produced, we have turned power to become a charismatic issue, an issue for men of God. Or our concept of power has just been deliverance and falling down and maybe healing. Oh no, no. Power is beyond that. The force that compels compliance. The power to manipulate outcomes. You manipulate and check it with the word. They are not the same. You manipulate again until it becomes consistent with that which is written. I believe what I'm teaching you. You are in for a real journey this night. We are still defining terminology. So power is the capacity to influence outcomes. Every prayer request is an outcome desired, whose is, is an outcome uh, that is a representation of your expectation. Something you want to change is what you document as a prayer request. And it only answers to power. Hmm. The subject of power was not supposed to be an issue that we talk about. The reason why the subject of power has become an irritation in the body of Christ is because it has become a noisy expression. A noisy expression of zeal without a testament validating it. We talk a lot about power. We teach series about power with all due respect. We write books about power. So many things power can do. Stories about power that we never see brought to the scene. Is the reason why the world does not take us seriously. I tell you the truth. Where the carcasses are, in truth, there the eagles will gather. Are we together? Let's define authority. Authority is the right or the legitimacy to use power. The legitimacy to administer power. The legitimacy to administer power. Please lend me your attention. It's called authority. The legitimacy to administer power. Authority is also the right to represent, to stand instead for. Are we together? So when we talk about authority, we talk about the legitimacy, the right to use power. It takes authority to not make your use of power illegal. I will always give this example. Please look at me. Imagine with me that there are two people standing here, one by my left and the other by my right. Let's call the person by my left an arm robber or a terrorist. Are we together? Having a gun an AK-47 and then someone standing here a military man licensed by you know the Nigerian military both of them are holding guns one has power 
because with that gun he can produce a real effect on your body like death or injury the effect is not fake if he shoots that gun the gun does not care whether it's a criminal shooting it it will kill you except you have something else greater than the gun are we together now but for the military man why will another person shoot both of them will shoot but one will go to bed in peace commended by the nation another one will go to jail what is the difference both of them have power but only one has authority are you listening now you have to understand this just because you have power does not authorize you to use it Oh, there is a judicial system in the spirit that vets authority. You ask the sons of Skiva. So many believers are conscious of power, but very few people understand the dynamics of authority. And you will be learning in the course of this teaching that you need both power and authority to walk in dominion. Dominion is a resultant effect of walking in power and authority power and authority if you have power alone then you are in the class of satan are we together now authority is a legitimacy to use power now let me say a few things about authority listen carefully please authority always comes with a predefined jurisdiction I need you to hear this the moment you mention authority you have to mention two other things number one jurisdiction number two supervision I need you to hear this it is impossible to have authority without these two components genuine authority must go hand in hand with these two things everywhere you see authority you must see jurisdiction and a system to supervise the usage of it so when you say I have authority the first thing we need to know is over what and over where and the second thing we need to know is what administrative system was put in place to check balance you in case you become a rebel are you seeing why many believers will not walk in authority listen carefully authority is always jurisdictional please look at me the official name for Nigeria is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, you may not understand that. That means that a, a predefined landmass, are we together, was a mark wherein the governmental jurisdiction of Nigeria functions. Even if you take one step out of that jurisdiction, the laws of Nigeria does not apply to you again. There are nations where a rope is literally what separates one nation from another but the consequences of escaping that rope by mistake can cost you the remaining part of your life are we together a rope literally if you move that rope this way you are in another nation with another jurisdiction and another set of laws jurisdiction is an important component to walking in dominion like you will be learning I have taught you here but I will repeat it again that the believer does not have power everywhere and it does not have power over everything it is important for you to know what God gave you authority over and how far that authority is so that you will not find yourself engaging and applying power where your jurisdiction does not hold let me give you an instance if you recall when I was teaching you, no believer has power in the throne room. You cannot command anything in the throne room to respond to you. Not the throne, not God, not elders, none of those. There is no record in scripture of anybody issuing a command in the throne room and making things happen. There is a predefined jurisdiction. Are we together? What is jurisdiction? This will be my third definition and then we'll begin to build a few things. Jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which 
it becomes illegal jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal you have to be a military man or you have to be a judicial person or to really understand these definitions the concept of jurisdiction there are times at least we know in Nigeria where a particular issue cannot be dealt with within a court and they say it is beyond their jurisdiction am I right on that that means take this issue out of this court everyone there is qualified but they know that they cannot administer they cannot deal with that issue because it is beyond their jurisdiction so we have different kinds of courts they are all courts I'm not learned enough forgive me to give you all of the structures intelligently I won't even attempt it but I can attempt the ones I know I know that there's high court I know that there's Supreme Court I know that there's appeal court I think I tried what is the difference between a customary court and a Supreme Court jurisdiction and the authority as far as every nation is concerned once the Supreme Court gives a verdict whether it is right or not within that predefined jurisdiction the matter has ended if you go to the does appeal court now nah, i don't you see why it's good to be appeal court does not have any power again i think it's done the supreme court declares and it is over no matter how angry you are you have to wait for maybe rapture god comes and whatever it is but as far as the earth is concerned now listen as interesting as what i'm saying is it has an implication to your life but did you know that even the Supreme Court itself from a from a transcontinental standpoint also submits to other judicial systems am I right on that that is what makes the Supreme Court valid there is no authority anywhere without a system of supervision higher than it it will not work what makes any system have authority is the ability to acknowledge another supervisory body that regulates it i made a statement some time ago and it disturbed many people within the body of christ i said god does not have authority it is true the reason why god does not have authority is because of everything i just told you for authority to happen to a man there must be jurisdiction and number two there must be another system higher than you to supervise it god cannot have authority not as god he only manifested authority when he became a man and that's because he submitted to the authority of the father are we together listen this is the reason why God can give men authority the Bible says he sought for a, to find out if there was any higher than him so that he would swear by and not finding any he had to swear by himself it's in your Bible he was willing to submit if he found one higher than him but he did not find any the meaning of that is when God speaks to you it's important to understand who just spoke did you hear what I said any other person can speak but when God speaks the righteous judge when he hits that hammer and says go forward listen if you don't know this you will never see any sick bed person healed in your life when you stand before the sick when you stand before the oppressed the moment you think just of your fasting and prayer alone nobody will rise up from there there has to be the consciousness there is a parliament in heaven God the one who is speaking to you is not supervised by another government no he has absolute power absolute he cannot have authority if God has authority it means there is a place where his power cannot work if he has authority it means there must be someone higher than him that he too should worship hmm. 
when Jesus became a man there was no manifestation of power until he acknowledged the government of heaven as my father has sent me I didn't just go I was sent I had to stay until I was sent you will understand the story between Jesus and the centurion now so Jesus is on his way and he meets this man this military man there's a reason why the story is with a military man because they are best to understand these terms so the man says please my servant other synoptic accounts will tell you his daughter Jarius's daughter and the rest but in this case he says my servant is sick unto death and Jesus said I respect you I will come to your house and he says no sir you are a busy man but there is something I know by my training I am a man under I didn't become a captain for nothing there I am under authority and being under authority has given me the license to say unto one go and he must go if he disobeys he did not disobey me the authority higher than me has to answer for me I say to one go and he goes I say to one come and he comes I say to one do this and he does it and Jesus said ah you know what he was saying Jesus you too you are a man under authority I've watched the miracles that come from you and yet you say you are a man if you said you were God I will not ask you but that you are a man this formula also applies to you so speak the word only that means the government that backs you does not have authority they can reach my house from anywhere and Jesus said who taught you this I've not found this orientation no not in Israel listen to me I've studied my Bible a bit I don't claim to know everything I've studied custodians of genuine power not talkers of it men who have demonstrated power that, and their demonstration has had equal value in any nation it was Maurice Sorullo who was teaching and he said he went to a, a prison place where they confine mad people I think it was in Haiti as soon as he stepped there the spirits were shouting through the people shouting his name Maurice Sorullo these were people who were not learned because power stepped in let me tell you there is a signature upon men who genuinely carry power you can't politicize it in the spirit i tell you the truth if if your life does not carry power the realm of the spirit knows those who carry power this is not just about speaking gibberish and pentecostal language power power The Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of the apostles and they were taken to those who were sick. The handkerchiefs did not speak in tongues. The handkerchiefs did not fast. They did not pray, but they came in contact with men who carried power and understood authority. I have never seen a generation that is a combination of great advancement in the spirit but commanding such pathetic disrespect from the realm of the spirit are we together there were men who walked upon the earth and circumstances would not dare disrespect their commands some of them were not educated but my god they carried power they carried genuine power the ratio of the things we say versus the the amount of them that happen is so small we need to go back to the secret place and ask ourselves something must be missing are we learning now the bible speaks about samuel a man whose word did not fall to the ground there are very few people in our generation who can ever have that testimony that they speak and there is performance to their speakings backed up by power tonight's teaching is to challenge you so jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed it means even the military man as much as he's licensed to shoot 
he cannot shoot anyone anywhere do you know even in the times of war there's what they call rules of engagement am i right on that military people sometimes the rules is that you don't kill women and children look for the terrorists alone it is the reason why when they are fighting wars at an international scale when they hit civilians they charge the nations and the people because they violated the rules of engagement most believers do not know what they have power over our ignorance is expressed in our prayers we pray and command everything including things that are beyond our jurisdiction and the realm of the spirit frowns at our ignorance our results follow same it's important for us to understand the dynamics of power i want to show you something that will make you a believer with authority that powers in the realm of the spirit will know you don't need to announce that you have entered a city you step into that city from one position and things will begin to leave a child that is missing somewhere you make one declaration you step into a city and like the like the donkey of saul that child returns home because the force is holding him cannot stand again hallelujah i remember it was said about the man charles g finney that one time he prayed so much when he entered a city people began to see mighty manifestations happen and they said what is happening they didn't even know and somebody announced that charles g finney is in town now he was having a crusade in a particular location but there was a a jurisdictional reaction because when you enter a place that is within your jurisdiction everything should answer there are we together now everything should answer now if the president of this nation comes here in his capacity as the president how many of you know that there are other people who must come with him in that capacity that is how it is in the spirit when you have this consciousness of authority and power when you step in you know that you are never alone there is an angelic backing it's true power the force that compels compliance authority the rights the legitimacy to administer power and jurisdiction and i told you that authority goes hand in hand with jurisdiction and a system that supervises it it is the reason why god does not have authority there is no jurisdiction that his power cannot reach in fact he is the creator of all things and then there is no government higher than him that supervises him that means you cannot say god is just or unjust there is no basis for it if god decides to lift a man you don't say god is unjust based on what he is god there is no reference that supervises him i will tell you why the word of god is powerful that same god now submitted himself to the word and says listen i can do all things i can do anything and i am god however i have limited my operation to the jurisdiction that scripture allows so the bible says he exalts his word more than his reputation more than his name that means as powerful as god is he still failed to keep his power within check using the word that means any dimension the word does not allow god's power cannot go beyond the way to get god's power to move is not to ask him to move is to show the jurisdiction based on scripture if the word of god if scripture cannot channel god's power to your body god's power cannot reach there because it is the word that defines and allocates where the power of god will find expression anywhere the word of god goes to it becomes legitimate for god's power to be there hallelujah now listen there are three things i want you to note number one man does not have absolute power please write this burn it in your heart and then write it on your notes man does not have absolute power only god has absolute power and let me add is the exclusive owner of all power 
man does not have absolute power it is true that man was given power it is true that man has dominion our dominion like our power is not absolute no we don't have power everywhere and over everything when the bible says all things it is a contextual communication second chronicles 29 verse 11 if god is helping you shout amen, amen. second chronicles 29 did I get that right? First Chronicles, my apologies, 29 11. I want you to shout that scripture with me. First Chronicles 29 11. Do you have the patience to read? Let's go. One to read. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness uh -huh, and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Read on. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Second Chronicles 20, 5 and 6. Second Chronicles 20, 5 and 6. Man does not have absolute power. Only God has absolute power. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Verse 6. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee absolute power not shared power not jurisdictional power god has absolute power number two to walk in dominion you must have both authority and power to walk in dominion you must have both authority and power now let's read luke 10 19 read it in the amplified the amplified version is the correct expression king james in this scripture did not do justice behold i have given you authority and power when you read it in kjv it says behold i have given you power to trample upon snakes and scorpions it's not a very accurate rendition amplified gives it a better expression behold i have given you authority and i have given you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power that the enemy possesses to believe satan does not have power is a joke he does the bible acknowledges that he does but what Satan does not have is authority is the reason why his use of power is illegitimate anywhere on earth. Anywhere the believer shows up, it is the reason why you can disarm his power and render it to naught. Just because the devil is not disturbing you does not mean he's not disturbing somebody else. Somebody else is still his victim. It's just that it is not you. And it's because it is light and power that comes through light that has bailed you out. Are we learning now? If curses are not working in your life, it does not mean they don't exist. It's just that your reality has immuned you from being a victim of it. Are we together now? Yes. If witchcraft does not plague you, it does not mean there's no witchcraft on earth. There is. Look at me. How many of you know that there is darkness in this room now? There is. It's only that the presence of light cannot allow that become a reality. But the moment the light is off, the darkness does not come. It simply manifests. It is there. In every light there is darkness. It's just that the dominion power of the light cannot allow you to know that there is darkness. There are parts of the world where children have not experienced blackout. What we call, you know, so when they travel and come to some places in Africa and we are rationing 12, 12, 12 hours on. Now, of course, I love my nation. God is helping us, eh? But are we together? And they see that in broad daylight, outside is brighter than inside because there's darkness. They begin to ask, what is wrong? And they look at the child and say, it's not your fault because you were born somewhere there. 
and they begin to tell you stories i was born it was with a lantern that they used this and that and that and now the child is wondering darkness listen satan has power let me tell you the truth when the bible says he was stripped of his power you need to understand the dynamics of that stripping it does not mean intrinsically he does not have power it means a system was created that if engaged will render his power impotent are we together now just because you don't have a virus inside you destroying you does not mean the virus is not on earth it is on earth it's simply that your immunity and the health system you put around your life may not allow that reality to be your reality but someone else is a victim of it to deny the existence of that virus is a joke but to acknowledge it and become afraid of it is also not the way you need to understand what health plan i'm just giving you an analogy you understand what i'm saying so believers are not called to fear satan fear causes fear all of these things no the, the this is the other angle that needs to be balanced especially in the subject of demonology deliverance the journey of the believer is not an endless pursuit of fighting demons indefinitely it is true that we all start from ground zero but that the victory of christ can be administered in such a way and a manner that nobody has to cast any spirit out of you again the reason why we minister deliverance all the time is because like salvation there is always someone added who needs that are we together if i'm ministering deliverance there are people if i see you out here i will say what is wrong with you you have been wasting my teaching because I don't expect you to be under the influence of any demons. But there are people who can come out. So we will keep ministering it. But I'm not ministering it to you as a matured believer. But it is my overall ministry. Are we together now? There is a level of growth you can attain onto. That can immune you from these demonic orchestrations. The initial separation is for your benefit, then methodically bringing light now builds you, constructs your spiritual understanding to a point where you are so wholesome. But there are many people who these demons are having a field day, praying on their ignorance, and then they continue to jump and say, I'm all right. And it is clear they are not all right. When you are free, it shows. Are we together? It is the reason why the greatest expression of liberty in many cases is the wind. The wind can move unrestrained. It doesn't move carelessly. If it begins to move carelessly, it becomes dangerous. But that restraint, that it is not bound, you can't chain it, you can't box it, you can't close it, that is the expression of liberty. Are we learning? The world is changing you tonight. To walk in dominion, you must have power and authority. Now listen carefully. I want to define for you man's jurisdiction in exercising authority and power. How far was man given to manifest authority and power? Because like I told you, man does not exercise authority and power just everywhere. God defined the jurisdiction where the power he's given to man will walk. There are rules of engagement. If you don't know this, you will shout and be binding and casting things anyhow and nothing will happen. Can I give you man's jurisdiction? Genesis 1.28 Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue. Watch this now. Have dominion over the fish of the sea. Now these expressions, it does, I've taught you here. It doesn't just mean sea. He's talking about realms of operations and jurisdiction. Are we together? The sea, the fall of the air. Over every living thing that creepeth or moveth upon the earth. So God defined for man his jurisdiction. Now let me tell you this. Where is the jurisdiction of man? In terms of territorial jurisdiction two realms one the realm of the spirit we do not have authority and power over heaven the heaven of heavens 
No, we do not. Are we together now? We can make petitions in prayer, but we cannot command, listen carefully, this, even this idea of commanding angels. Now, I don't want to get into very sensitive topics, but there are the idea of commanding angels. Angels don't obey you. Angels like all spirits obey the word. Are we together now? So if it looks like they are obeying you, they are simply obeying the word you have come to honor. You do not indefinitely command angels just because of hierarchy and keda. It is not given like that. That means if you become careless, they also obey the carelessness. No, there are rules of engagement. So there are many believers who sometimes they just command angels anyhow. And, I, and God is a merciful God. He can forbear with our ignorance. No. Are we together? The angelic realm and the realm of clean spirits. I hope you know that angels also form part of there are clean spirits and there are unclean spirits. So you don't just command any spirit. No, there are spirits that man's authority and man's power cannot command. There is nowhere in scripture where men commanded the four and twenty elders. There is nowhere in scripture where men commanded the living creatures. No, there are beings and inhabitants in heaven. We are not given the authority to command them. No. So you need to know what we have power over. I'm coming there. But from a jurisdictional component, watch this now. As far as the earth is concerned, this landmass and then the realm of the spirit, God gave man authority. Are we together? It is possible to speak to realities beyond the frame of science, beyond the frame of this natural habitat, this territory, and they can respond to you. This is the reason why we can rebuke devils. It's the reason why we can speak to spirits far beyond this place and they will still obey. And then over the earth, listen, the earth as it is, the winds and the elemental forces are still within the jurisdiction of man's power. You can speak to them, albeit in partnership with the word of God. Please learn this as a rule of thumb. Let this be the school of power and authority. Creation does not obey you. Creation obeys the word of God that you honor. Are we together now? Every time you speak and things happen, don't just pride and take credit for it. Uh -uh. It's because of something you have honored. You have honored the word. You have honored the spirit of God. You have honored God. So creation will honor you as they will honor God. You will not just stand and say in the name of Jesus, every demon spirit over Abuja, leave. If they do leave, it is because they saw in you your honor to the word of God. The reality of that revelation of authority. Are we together now? I can tell you one thing. The realm of the spirit and even our natural habitat does not honor nor do they obey rebellion. Obedience is the rule of dominion. In rebellion, there is no authority. Is someone learning? So when in the place of prayer, you speak increase. When in the place of prayer, you decree and declare that the elemental forces will not be used as instruments of enchantment and witchcraft against you. You are demonstrating authority. It's within your jurisdiction. Are we together now? So no one, I have taught you that in this realm, the supernatural depends on five elemental forces. Everywhere you see the supernatural manifesting physically, it depends, it is conveyed through five elemental forces. Number one, the earth. Number two, water. Number three, wind, a sound or whatever. Number four, light. So he said, the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. Are we together now? Every time you see the supernatural, I'm speaking to you now. I'm using the power of the air or wind, amplifying my voice through your ears to your spirit.
the supernatural can never be made manifest outside of these elemental forces and that is the reason why you must exert dominion over them because they are the same forces that are used by wizardry and witchcraft and orchestrations of darkness when you go to a herbalist it's the same elemental forces that will be used is someone learning so what is man's jurisdiction what were you given power over number one you were given power over satan and all unclean spirits listen to me all unclean spirits that function within the earth oppressing believers hmm. you are given power over satan and all unclean spirits listen that function within the earth realm oppressing the saints because there are other unclean spirits that your power will not work for they have been bound with everlasting chains they are unclean spirits but it's not within the jurisdiction of the current dominion of the saints it is true there are other spirits that have have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer lord i admit i am a sinner i need and want your forgiveness i accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love not based on anything i have done cleanse me and make me your child be faithy receive you into my heart as the son of god and as savior and lord of my life from now on help me live for you with you in control dot in your precious name amen congratulations to you if you have just said that prayer you are now a child of god look around you for a bible believing church and also ask jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve him consider subscribing to this channel too so that you'll keep learning the realities of god's kingdom god bless you